grateful for the slave trade. Because Should high-profile Baptist ministries work with people that say, I thank God for the Holocaust, because through the Holocaust, X and Y family, a member of mine became a Christian? In, in, which, in which other arena would that be acceptable? And if they wouldn't work with someone that has this type of ideas, crazy ideas, then why would they work with someone that says that they thank God for slavery? Because my ancestors were brought over in the slave trade, it was very bad for them, and I'm not, I don't want to downplay the suffering. But had that not happened, uh, my family probably wouldn't be Christians right now. God used that to bring the gospel to my family, and now most of my family worships the Lord. Most of my family is in the kingdom of God, and I'm grateful to God for that. Uh, also, most of my family is in a better financial situation and social situation. than they would have been if they were still uh, in Africa. And so I'm grateful to God for that. Weirdo. It is definitively a blessing. Privilege is a blessing. We should be passing privilege on to our children. This is obviously very disgusting. That's obviously sick to take the Bible and twist it to say, well, I, all I was doing is uh, supporting my family. All I was doing is making sure that I left my kids and my grandkids a good inheritance, a good heritage, a good legacy by enslaving other people and abusing their, uh, abusing their bodies and subjecting them to hard work. Yeah, I was just being a biblical person. So I don't have to apologize for saying that ens enslaving people uh, was, a, was a blessing to me. I mean, that's, that's just obviously crazy. I don't think that much people in our audience need to be explained why. <laughs> I don't think most people in the world have to, exp be exp uh, have to be told why this is just crazy and immoral. But, you know, just to show you guys uh, a glimpse of uh, the people that we're dealing with, the sickness that we're dealing with. Fortunately, this is just a very small minority. But, um, yeah. This is, this is the kind of stuff that's being peddled around. I suppose these people would also thank some God for the kidnap and raping of a girl just because after the crime was committed, she found a Gideon Bible in the hotel room where she was, where she was raped. I mean, how sick is that? But, you know, this is a sick theology that a lot of people subscribe themselves to. Here's an example. If it's not requiring her to sin, but simply hurting her, then I think she endures verbal abuse for a season and she endures perhaps being smacked. Weirdo. But we normal and reasonable people, we know better than that. Uh, here in our audience, uh, we are well educated. We know that the gospel was already in Africa. Uh, we have all these church fathers, Augustine, uh, Moses the Black. Uh, there are so many. There, I mean... The, the gospel was already in Africa. There was no need for, for, for people to come here to learn anything. I mean, and then the excuse that, you know, oh, well, here at least we have economic opportunities. Really? Let me remind all of us again, what are the means of grace? It's word, it's water, it's bread, and it's wine. Jesus comes to you. Jesus bombards you through your eyes, through your ears, through the water, so your, your skin, you get baptized, he saves you, and through your mouth when you eat the bread and the wine. He, bom he bombards you in all kinds of ways with, with grace. Four established ways or means of grace. Kidnapping is not one of them. Whipping somebody is not one of them. Raping and pillaging nations and taking them, taking them out of their context. And by the way, there were a number of Christians that were brought here uh, through this deception. They were lied to. There were Christians already in their nations. They were brought here under false pretense. They were broken in this sh uh, ships, in their, their slave ships, and they were put to work. They were kidnapped by false Christians, 
false teachers that use the Bible, abuse the Bible to perpetuate this crazy unbiblical notion that a certain number of people, be it Native Americans, blacks, etc., etc., were inferior to them and that they were put in, in, in a place of submission and obedience to another race. That's unbiblical. Anything, all these men and women, Christians potentially, that came here and were abused had to, sub, had to endure, persevere in their faith, knowing that they were so-called Christians using the Bible to teach them to not, not only abuse them and beat them, but also teach them that they were subhuman and going to church, sing their praises, being respected in society while I'm here locked up doing free work for you and getting beaten and raped, separated from my family. I am the, I am the, they were the real Christians. They were being persecuted. Let's call it what it is. It was church persecution. What was going on? False people, evil, false Christians going to already potentially Christian nations, pillaging, raping, kidnapping, and submitting people to hard, crazy work. That's the reality of the issue. You, you, you have twisted it. You've, you, you have turned history on its head. And what if some of them were non-Christians? What if, why, why if some of them had, you know, we know that there's a lot of African tribes, just like there was uh, Native American tribes that worship all kinds of idols and, and false gods. Well, guess what? We had the same thing in Europe. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of these uh, founders and, 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 and Christians that supposedly Christians that came here and, and were dominating blacks and stuff, they were deists. They had false teachings. They were, they were heretics. Why didn't you enslave them to make them Christians? Because they needed the gospel as well, right? But well, why didn't God predestine for them to, to be enslaved? That's, that's what I want to know. Why did you have to travel so far to help evangelize all these people when you could have done it right here with your own? You see, what we have here is nothing but pure ignorance. It's pure ignorance. Abusers, evil people. Uh, we, we've seen this already. We, we see communists, they do this, they take the Bible, they twist it on its head and, you know, make the Bible sing praises to their evil system. You see, we see horny men, you know, take women captive with false doctrine. Oh, look, polygamy was a good thing back in the uh, Old Testament days. So, you know what? Yeah, I know that this text over here says that we're not supposed to have multiple wives and, and, and things like this, but we, 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 we believe the Bible. And let's just focus on this text here in the Old Testament and just divorce it from its context and teach you women that, you know, ha having, you know, that, 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 that a guy having four, uh, four, four wives is a, is a good and godly thing. You know, it happened in the past. Why not do it now? So I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not angry that, uh, th this guy is, is using the example of Joseph uh, to, to, you know, and, and, and quote unquote, thank God for the abuse that his family or whatever the case may be went through. Uh, this is not nothing new. Uh, we see it with slaves as well. They, they, they thought they were ec economically uh, dependent on these people. They, they didn't have any other options. They saw them as God, a, a godsend. I really thank God for, for this individual that is beating me or, or ki has kidnapped me. It's not, doesn't give me my freedom, fr freedom to move wherever I go. People really came to love uh, this condition. This is, but, I, but again, as I, as, as I said before, it, it is nothing that we, it's, it's something that we have to approach people with compassion. And I don't really um, condemn the people under this system of thought. Maybe it was a Calvinistic 1689 or the Douglas Wilson school of thought, because till this day he considers himself a, um, I think he calls himself a new, new paleo confederate or something of those terms, where they speak very highly about uh, guys like Dabney that, you know, was a crazy racist or um, thinks highly of the Confederacy. He thinks it was not so much about 
that he, he, he thinks that it is, it was unbiblical to do it the way that I did it, which of course is ignorant. Um, s slavery ended violently in many other countries like Haiti and the Caribbean. And to try to subject people to a biblical way of, of ending racial strife or, or, or systematic, you know, a, a system that had been in place for decades to, to, to abuse people. He thinks that the best way, the biblical way would have been to do it in X or Y way, while at the same time, not really condemning those who had sin in the first place by enslaving these people. So I understand the psychological brainwashing, how to make you, how they trained you or, or uh, conditioned you to love your abuser. That's, that's what's going on here. So uh, we, we do have to have compassion for this individ individuals. But I do want to take the time to really bring out what was the real point of Joseph in this, uh, the narrative of Joseph. What was God doing through that narrative? What, what was God giving us the church through this narrative? And it's very simple. It is not about slavery. It's not about the goodness of of this and uh, of, of beating up people or anything like that, or, or just saying, Oh God predestined this for my, my good for, for me to be saved, for me to understand the gospel. We know that is, that's garbage. Uh, it, 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 in fact, this enslavers were doing everything possible in their power to not give you the gospel, to teach you that you were an animal. But the point of the message of Joseph or the narrative of Joseph was that you had a type of Christ. In other words, um, Jesus, uh, Joseph was abducted. He was abused. He was in, uh, given into slavery. He was lied about. His 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 um, his reputation was was denigrated. He was betrayed, even in prison. He was betrayed by his family members, his brothers, namely. But at the end of the day. The point of the narrative was to show that he became the savior, not only in a material way, by bringing them, remember the narrative of Genesis 50 and previous, to give them grains to survive the famine, the famine that had hit the, uh, the, 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 the Egypt. Remember that they were not, they, they, he had a dream about, you know, the, uh, the, the, there was going to be a, a, a scarcity of, of grains and, and this and that. And so he was able to save his family materially by providing his brothers and his father with grains, but also to bring absolution, the forgiveness of sins. And so Jesus comes afterwards, thousands of years after, and he suffers beating, he suffers betrayal, he suffers mockery even from his brothers and cousins, very like the, the, the type of Joseph. But at the end, he dies not only to give Hebrews and, and, or Jewish people, uh, uh, salvation to die for them, the son of God dying for these people, but also uh, the Gentiles. So, but, so here we see a, a type and the anti-type of, of, of Jesus, the one that was betrayed. It is not about, it's not about slavery or, or beating up people. Or that God predestined evil to bring you salvation. No, the point here is that the church, through Christ, has been commissioned. The mission of the church is to go to the nations, not with whips, not through kidnapping, not through t telling you that you're lesser than, not by segregating you and telling you you come to come, you can't come into certain spaces, not by telling you you better not touch our women. Not by telling you, hey, you Negro, stay in your place. Don't you dare pick a book. Don't you dare, uh, uh, dare, uh, dare learn how to write and read. That's not your place. Your place is to pick cotton and to do all these things. That is not what we have been commissioned as a church to do. So, so here we see a, gr a great way in which the word of God is being twisted, manipulated, in evil ways, again, the, the same way the enslavers did it back there in the day. This is crazy and it has to stop. Por favor, de está enseñando porquería en sus canales de YouTube. Váyase de aquí con su porquería de evangelio.
Ya nosotros tenemos suficientes problemas, hemos sido suficientemente maltratados para estar escuchando a un, a un latino de mentira hablando payasada en YouTube y enseñándole a la gente que el abuso es una cuestión de Dios. Por favor, vete de aquí con esa porquería. Yeah, friends, so there you go. I certainly don't, don't think, thank God for, for slavery. I'm not that crazy. I'm not delusional. I don't suffer from any mental illness. But I do thank God that this dude's ministry is over. We don't need more of these crap. We don't need this kind of biblical and theological and historical ignorance. We don't need that stuff anymore. We don't need that in our continents. Latin America already has a lot of problems. We don't need to be told that slavery was a way to go. We don't need that crap. Anyways, Whittemere Project, subscribe. Thank you for joining. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye.